Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to another video here on my channel. In today's video it's actually a very simple topic but it can also be very complex in the end. We're talking about PCI Express cable extensions or the cable connectors. For example an 8-pin connector that goes to your VGA because it's just one of those topics that occur over and over again on my channel. Uh, I just saw it recently very often when I was posting extreme overclocking content about a 2080 Ti Strix and I saw several comments of people saying why are you using a 2080 Ti Strix which only has two 8 pin connectors while there is an MSI Lightning that offers three times 8 pins so there is a higher power delivery to the card so the card in theory can overclock better. Is that really true? Obviously it's not. And in this video we will talk about or check out how much of that is actually marketing and how much is really necessary in the end. Before we go deeper into this topic we will just take a look at some of those cables on my table here. On here we see a 6 plus 2 connector which is essentially an 8 pin connector you use for your normal VGA. And on this side it's again the 6 plus 2. I marked two of the pins. So the one on the bottom here and the other white marked pin, those are sense pins, at least according to the specs. But that's the point. All nowadays PSUs are not following the specs. So in the end we have 3 times 12 volt on the bottom, we have 5 times ground on the top and 1 time ground here. The sense pin on here was actually made so the PSU can measure the 12 volt because during load your 12 volt will drop. So for example you have two GPUs and you have one CPU as um, power draw in your system. They're all drawing individual power and the power draw will result the voltage to drop and the PSU can measure the voltage drop and then regulate it accordingly. But then you can already figure out if you have two GPUs and one CPU they will all have or will all cause a different power draw and also a different voltage drop therefore it doesn't really make much sense to have different sense pins. Only one sense pin would make sense and in this case typically the sense pin is on a 24 pin connector and not on the 6 pin or 8 pin connector and those are just um, 12 volt pins on the bottom and ground pins on here. This gets also a little bit more clear if we take a look at this adapter which is a little bit older. You can see this is a 6 pin PCI Express connector and what's really funny is that the pin in the middle is actually missing but that connector is following the specs. So we have three times ground on top and we have 12 volt here and we have 12 volt here and the pin in the middle is actually not occupied if you're following the specs but in reality all nowadays 6 pin connectors would be um, 3 times ground on top 3 times 12 volt on the bottom that's basically what we are having here with the 6 plus 2 pin connector. You're probably asking yourself right now why is it even important what I'm telling you right now. The reason for that is that if you're taking a closer look at a 6-pin connector like this one, the, this one is actually following the ATX specs. We have 6 pins in total, 2 times 12 volt, 3 times ground. This is the spec, but in reality we always have 3 times 12 volt and 3 times ground. According to the ATX spec, this one can deliver 75 watt, but obviously if we are adding one more pin, it can deliver more than 75 watt. It's the same with the 8-pin connector. The 8-pin connector, according to specs, has two times sense pin, but in reality they are all occupied with ground, so therefore an 8-pin connector can also deliver more than the 150 watt according to the specs. We will now take a closer look at my 2080 Ti Strix, because I want to explain some of the power features there and also want to explain how the card is actually detecting what kind of connector is plugged. Here is my 2080 Ti Strix. Power delivery typically over the PCI Express slot 75 watt and 2 times 8 pin so 2 times 150 watt if we are following the ATX specs. And what I want to show you now is that if we plug this into my system you can see behind the two 8 pin connectors there are two red lights indicating if a connector is plugged or not. And now we have this which is essentially the plus 2 of a 6 plus 2 connector so I just cut it off and connected it. Basically what we're doing is we're bridging or connecting sense to ground. And you can see if we're bridging this, if we're plugging in or bridging the ground and sense you can see it changes from red to white. It's the same on this one. If we do it we basically simulate that a connector is plugged and as you can see obviously an 8 pin connector is not plugged. The card cannot detect if an 8 pin connector is plugged or not. It can simply detect 
if this pin is grounded or not. That's all the card can detect. This means in theory we could bridge both of them with two of those small adapters I would call it and then we could still plug on the card and the card would not be able to detect if 12 volt is connected to those or not. I'm not sure if the card would power on, I actually never tried that. You can now see the 2080 Ti Strix. In the past it was actually very easy because the power delivery was just over the PCI Express slot and the 2 times 8 pin, 6 pin, whatever was delivering the power to the card and everything was just connected to one 12 volt plane. Today is a lot different because we have those little ICs here. Those are the power shifters. They can basically decide which or which connector goes where. For example, this power shifter is connected to the PCI Express slot and this one can go to some of those phases. So if this one is switched on, it can decide that power can flow from the PCI Express slot to the 12 volt phases, uh, not the 12 volt phases, to the V-core phases of the GPU. The three uh, phases on top here are for memory, the rest here is for the GPU and also of those are all GPU. And because we have those phase shifters, the card can regulate which connector goes where. So for example, this one is connected to this 8 pin, this one is connected to this 8 pin and depending if this one is switched on or this one, this one is switched on, the card can directly decide which power connector or power source it wants to use. The reason why I'm giving you this information is because I was thinking of hooking up this adapter to one of the power connectors and then just plug in this one and so we just have one 8 pin connector and this one is basically unoccupied. But then we have to keep in mind we have those shunt resistors right here where the card can trace or track the power consumption over each connector. Same goes for the PCI Express connector which is on the bottom here. Now if we just plug in the adapter here and we have the power shifters and the card can decide which power source it wants to use, it can theoretically detect that power coming from this 8-pin connector is like very very low, that there is still a lot left because we just plugged in this one, there is no power flowing across the shunt resistor, then everything could be switched or the power shifters to this 8-pin connector and then I'm not really sure what's going to happen. So practically we will always have to connect both of them to make sure that none of this is or there's always some connection to it at least one 12 volt and one ground pin and then we can see how it goes. The cooler is back on the card, card is assembled, card is currently running Firmark. I just wanted to make sure that the card is running 100% TDP load so it's drawing 250 watt exactly what a card is designed for. I hooked up the current clamp to the 12 volt cables of the 8 pin cables. So in total we have 6 times 12 volt running through the current clamp where we can see currently something between 17.5 to 18 ampere. Basically that's what the card is drawing across the two 8 pin connectors. Now if we translate it to power consumption in watt, it's times 12, so about 210 watt. The other 40 watts that are missing to the 100% TDP should then go over the PCI Express slot. So I assume that we're currently drawing about 40 watt across the PCI Express connector. Obviously that's just a guess because I cannot draw or cannot measure the power draw across the PCI Express slot and we can just Assume that the power shifting is working correctly and assuming that the card is drawing 250 watt in total. One more thing we have to keep in mind is the voltage drop. If we have more connections there is less voltage drop. So for example if we hook up 4 times 8 pin connectors there is less voltage drop because the resistance across the cables to the, uh, to the card is less. If we have a higher resistance or less cables the voltage drop is higher and we will have a lower voltage on the GPU. If we just measure the voltage that's currently arriving on the cart, you can see it's 12.21, 12.20 volt arriving on the cart. That's pretty much perfect. We want to have not less than 12 volt ideally. And if we have more connectors, it's higher. And if we have less connectors, the voltage drop is higher or the voltage drop is lower. It could be that, uh, for example, if we just have one 6-pin connector instead of two 8-pin connectors, that we only have 12.1 volt, which still would be fine. But that's something we will monitor. So if we now remove some of the cables with the adapter, we will keep in mind voltage drop and also power consumption. Two of the six 12-volt cables are now cut. You can see they're just cut and also insulated now, so they don't or cannot make any short circuits. 
The result is that we have a voltage drop from 12.21 to 12.19, which is still fine. There's like, it's not a problem whatsoever. I also attached a thermocouple to the remaining four cables. We can now see that the temperature on the cable is about 30 degrees Celsius, which is perfectly fine. This is actually an 18 uh, AWG cable, um, one that looks like that. That's just a, to a totally normal standard cable we're using in almost all of the PSUs nowadays in PCs. And it's, it contains about yeah, 30 very small wires. And if we're following spec, an 18 um, AWG cable can draw 4.2 amps if we have between 25 and 42 small wires. So 4.2 amps is spec maximum for this if we want to stay within 30 degrees Celsius. Then we also have to keep in mind that if we just read on this, it says um, 18 AWG and then it says 90 degrees Celsius. On this one, I saw some of them, they are rated at 60, some of them at 70, 80, whatever. But if it would be 30 degrees Celsius max, then it would be maximum 4.2 amps. If we translate it, we are still drawing like 17.5 amps across the four remaining cables. And that's almost spec because four of them, 17 amps, we have like 4.4, 4.5 amps, something in that direction. So we're slightly above spec for 30 degrees Celsius, which is kind of what we are seeing here as well. It's still totally fine. We have a slight voltage drop, but as you can see, the card is still up and running. So we will just continue cutting cables. After cutting the third and keeping Fermac running for almost 20 minutes now, nothing really changed. Still 33 degrees Celsius only on the 12 volt and we have 12.1819. So also the voltage drop is not significant, but we can see power draw is still the same. So we will just keep cutting and we will go down to two lines, two wires. Even with only two 12 volt wires, there is not much difference. Temperature wise, we are still like 30 degrees Celsius, 33, not much difference. We, you can see it's still drawing 18 amps across or over the current clamp, so over two wires. We are still running Fermark for almost 20 minutes. Clock is the same, performance is the same, no difference. Only the voltage drop is significantly higher with 12.0607. Next step is cut ground wires. So we will cut all ground wires except two per connector. And so in total, we will have two ground wires per connector and one 12 volt wire. Unfortunately, I couldn't cut as many ground wires as I wanted to. In my left hand, on the left side, you can see the two 12 volt wires. On the right side, you can see four wires. All of them are ground. I cut one ground wire here and one ground wire here. I had to leave two of them because they are actually connected over those two additional wires to the plus two connector, which goes to the right. And if we cut them, it will not be bridged and then the plus two connector will not work. So it will detect that the eight pin connector would not be plugged. And in this case, the card wouldn't power on. So we will just use it for now with two 12 volt wires and four ground wires, which essentially is the same as using one of those old six pin connectors where we have two times 12 volt and we have four ground wires. So basically we're running a Strix that's supposed to be run with two eight pin connectors with one six pin connector. Still no difference, still voltage drop is fine. We're at 12.06, which is still really okay. The temperature of the wire is still okay. Card is still running fine. So even after cutting half of the cables, no problem whatsoever. Next step is adding the small adapter and see if we can actually leave away a complete 8-pin connector. So this is not working. After adding the adapter that's bridging the connector, the card is not powering up, which was kind of obvious that it wouldn't work. But yeah, I tried both. So either this 8-pin or this 8-pin connector and one bridged doesn't work so we have to use at least one 8-pin connector but we cannot cut more wires because we are down at one wire 12 volt down at two wires ground for each connector which is the minimum we can do because of the sense pin to come to the conclusion of this video you can see everything is still up and running 
I just plugged the two 8-pin connectors back, everything is fine. Obviously we cannot use this adapter because the card will think that the connector is plugged, it will probably do the, the power shifting, the phase shifting, and then there is just no voltage. And the power or the PWM controller of the card can detect that there is nothing arriving, there is no power, so it will have a false signal, the power good will be wrong, therefore the GPU will not power up, therefore you, can, you, or you saw that the card wouldn't boot. So that's the result of using an adap adapter like this to simulate that the 8-pin connector is plugged. So we know that we need at least one 12 volt, one ground wire, which is basically what we simulated. We cannot simulate really much less. We went down from uh, two times eight to total six wires, which is a lot less and it's still totally fine. So what's the conclusion? Are three 8-pin connectors necessary? Absolutely not. They're absolutely not necessary. Even if you're doing extreme overclocking, you can use two times eight connectors, two times eight, two times eight pin connectors. It's totally fine. The only thing that will really change is the voltage drop and you might increase your cable temperature. But to get an even higher increase of cable temperature, you would have to run, I don't know, like 600, 700 watt across the card. Then obviously the cable temperature could become a problem. But in the regions where we are in like 250 to maybe 350 watt, it's absolutely not an issue. Of course, always keep in mind that the connector itself could always cause problems as well because the connection is worse than the cable itself. So typically the connection or the, uh, the connector temperature is higher than the cable temperature because the connector would have less surface, less contact than the wire. So typically the contact point of the cable is where you could cause or could uh, could see problems um, doing something like this. I didn't see any problems. I was running everything for like for 20 minutes, which is obviously not that much. But we were also going very extreme. So down from two times eight to six pins. So 16 to six, that's a big change. And even then it was running fine. So as a conclusion, I can be sure to say that there is no, no difference running three times eight pin or two times eight pin. So if you will have that discussion next time with your friends, you can link them to this video. I hope you learned something today. See you soon.